is being better at asking the right questions. You know? And you'll see this, you'll see that kind of phrase um, being used in movies and things. You um, and some philosophies are the whole. Um, it's the Douglas Adams, the the um, forty two. Forty two. The answer is forty two. Right? The problem is asking the right question. Um, and if you're six times nine, it's, yeah, six times nine, which isn't 42. <laughs> the world's broken. But, um, no, so, so asking the right question is actually the harder bit. And now, more than ever, is about asking questions. Right? So that's partly why I wanted to make the Go Rad game, and I actually like that again, about asking questions, not about giving answers. Right? Because it would be easy for me to write a game, a quiz game. Right? I ask questions, you guys read the paper, and provide an answer. Okay, that's, that's far more standard. Right? You'll see that that's kind of what the exam process is. Right? The exam process is we teach you a bunch of stuff, ask you a bunch of questions, you give us a bunch of answers. Right? Um, that's fine at undergraduate level, we're still trying to teach you knowledge at undergraduate level. We're no longer teaching you knowledge. Right, which is a bit of a change at master's level. We are teaching you to master a subject area, <coughs> which isn't necessarily about knowing about it, it's about understanding in a way that you can ask the right questions so that you can then extract the right information when presented a new problem. Okay? <coughs> um, and so that's why I kind of focused on these question, questioning kind of what makes a good question. And so we've got a bunch of questions and I thought one of the things we could do is go through those questions and see, like, discuss how do we measure the quality of those questions? What do you guys think <coughs> differentiates a good question from a bad question? Now, um, I have some experience doing this because one of the things I do, and I can, um, I can turn this off. I can show you, show you some of the weirdness I do. Um, I do a bunch of stuff with my first years, uh, and I have done, ooh, I first did it in 99, so 16 years ago, so for the last 16 years, um, I've been trying to um, assess the quality of the questions that I ask my students, right? Um, you guys have all sat exams. Did you think that there were some questions that were good questions and some questions that were shit questions? Would you ever... Do you feel you could rate the questions in the exam as being that's a really good question or that's a really bad question? Take, Can, take a shot at it. They all yep. elaborate. I, I find that super way all the time. But that's from like uh, high school. We always got like a topic and then elaborate. Right. Okay. So so some of the things that we don't like. <laughs> so I, and this is this is what we can kind of kind of work on is is the elaborate questions. So you don't like uh, being told to elaborate. I favor asking those questions. You like those questions, so we've got we've got a, yeah, a, if if they have a good frame, they're good. But if they're just one up. elaborate online, please. So <laughs> we've got one up vote and one down vote. Um, so on our, on, our, on our normal voting system that would be zero, right? So this is a neutral question. Um, you know, you guys have all seen up voting and down voting. Yeah, the, the reason why is if you can just say yes, then you have a 50 50 chance to be right. If you say yes because and need to argue why, then we can see in the argument whether it is a reasonable. So, yeah, but that elaborate makes, or explain. Wouldn't that make a closed question a bad question and not be elaborate a bad question? Or, or a good question? I mean, in. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, there's a, yeah. Yeah. so a, 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 a question with a simple answer. Um, the question here is, is do you have a, like, is guessing and getting it right good or bad? That is bad. Right? Um, and so one of the things uh, where I, I actually was recently reading a paper on um, multi-choice marking systems, right? Because I do a, my own mark, multi-choice marking system. And they had a group of seven axioms about what makes a good multi-choice uh, 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 marking system. And one of those is that guessing should yes you shouldn't be able to get a, a high grade from merely guessing right so you so guessing should get you somewhere around zero ish right so guessing is the same as not knowing was their 
was one of the axioms they used. Um, that's not always true. Sometimes guessing is better than saying nothing, and sometimes saying nothing is better than guessing, and depends on your academic tradition. So the German academic tradition is that guessing is bad. Right? So you rather say nothing than be wrong. So, no? <laughs> I'm a tutor. I've read a lot of shit in exams. Okay, <laughs> okay. There's a bunch of students who just don't do follow their process. But you need that when correcting exams. So funny thing. It, it can you help to keep, keep things entertaining. Um, okay, so so the, so the open-ended versus closed questions. So these are... are so we've got open-ended... Um, So, who likes open-ended questions? Who like open-ended questions? So, those are questions which so they, well, allow not, you to keep writing more. Yeah, but not in the elaborate on topic form, but where they frame your, the question and then allow you to elaborate on the framed <coughs> question. Okay, so you, you so giving giving you enough content to know what they're kind of thinking yeah, about. To give you a general direction, but they all elaborate is elaborate on life that's kind of hard was, that is yeah. 42 yeah yeah so try writing 42 okay so so we've got so so there's the open-ended when you are when you're trying to assess someone's knowledge of something then asking them an open-ended question that allows them to talk more about it um you actually assess two things one is is their knowledge the second is their stress level, right? Their ability to, and, and how comfortable they're feeling, right? Because if they're, they're comfortable and you ask them to elaborate, usually they will talk, or ask an open question, they'll keep talking. If they're very stressed, opening questions tend to cause them to block because they go, oh, I, don't, I don't know. Ask me something else, right? If you ask them something very specific, they can answer that. And if you ask them all of the specifics of the opening question, they could answer all of them. But in their stress, they're not able to kind of freely associate and get to the answer. So stress has got a very interesting response to, to how people respond to open-ended open -ended and closed-ended questions. Um, I think, unfortunately, managing stress is helpful in all types of examinations. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, Stress management, that's <laughs> Your, your productivity stress curve. Um, so we kind of want you in here, which is a bit stressed. Right? In here, the course is too easy, and in here, the course is too hard. Or the exam. Right? Or the exam, or the current experience. Um, I know that, that in, in, the, uh, in our first year exam, which one of them, which had like 150 multi-choice questions, that's ridiculous, um, the first one, was usually something like, um, uh, which one of these is not a German philosopher? Right, this is a computer science exam, <laughs> and so you had like you had three German philosophers and Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and so yeah, yeah, Mickey Mouse. So you kind of got a free one just to get you started. <laughs> so so just because you know, and the exam was going to get scaled slightly anyway, so it didn't matter that you gave everybody one free mark for turning up. Um, but yeah, so they, they kind of tried to set a lighter hearted mood by giving you a kind of fun, quirky question in the beginning, um, just to kind of break that stress. So yeah, managing where you place the person you're asking questions of. Okay, so opening questions. Uh, you guys talk about research questions yet at any point? Okay. No. Hmm? No. Uh, we had it a bit in a uh, course last semester, or I yep. did, and I thought, why did you think good questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what were some good things about research questions? No, it should be, uh, oh, what was it? It should be interesting, uh, give some new light on the topic, but also within uh, that you could actually answer it within a set of the of timeline or, or answer it specifically within reasonable time, I think, is the sort of the basic gist of it. So small enough, but still interesting. Yeah. Okay. There are some other measures for for um, quality of questions. Um, and we talk about, and, and it's the same as, they're very similar to goals. That's setting goals. You guys have all, have you read about 
um, how you set good goals for yourself? What's a good personal goal? How would you distinguish a good goal from a bad goal? Is it a long-term goal or is it a short-term goal? It doesn't matter. Either way. Either way. Something measurable? Measurable. So uh, asking a question which is measurable is that means you're more likely to be able to get an, like actually have a proper answer to the question. Right? So um, some human questions don't fit that that model. Right? So when I when I come up to you and say um, how are you today? Well, how am I? Is, how measurable is that? Um, and, and even worse, when I would scare some of my students at Otago, well, some of my colleagues at Otago, um, I'd go, instead of saying, hi, how are you? I'd go, hi, are you happy? <laughs> and then you go, what? Because <laughs> nobody asks if you're happy, because that's a deep, much a deeper emotional question than how are you? But, so that would freak them out, so they actually kind of have to think or, or if you suddenly. Answer to how are you with, pretty bad, actually. Pretty uh, bad. Um, also stops it yeah, they also go, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, I have to admit that that was one of the, like, the conversations with Rachel before we were a couple, because she was working at the university too. Um, she walked past me and said, oh, hi, Simon, how are you? And said, yeah, not good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of breaking up with my wife at the moment, so so I entered the discussion with her about how I actually felt, because <laughs> she asked. Um, I just didn't recognise that. No, no, she was in passing, just being polite. <laughs> um, but you know, it happens. Um, but measurable, measurable for if you, so if you're asking a question about the paper, right? So if you were reading this paper and said, you know, a question like, was the paper fun to read? How do I measure fun? What do, I, what do you mean fun? Um, how, yeah, it, it's something that doesn't necessarily have a nice objective measure, right? But you could ask questions that were much more specific and measurable. So measurable often is a good question. Measurable goals are good goals. Um, what other what other makes a, a good medium or short term goal? That they are you can actually re, uh, reach them. Yeah, attainable, right? So for goals, attainability. So which kind of is in the answer for a question is answerability. Is can this be answered? Right? Is this a question that can be answered, or are you asking a question that this cannot be answered? So it's right? non-philosophical. Well, it, it kind of fits with measurable, right? So if you're asking a measurable question, you're always you're answering one that usually can be answered. Um, so, like, a, an example of a bad question might be, how many pegasi live on Jupiter? Jupiter? That would be measurable, but we just can't measure it because we can't get there to measure it. We don't know if there are any at all. I have no idea if there are any. There probably aren't. But... So it's, it's measurable, but it's not really answerable. Or it's measurable in some sense, right? But um, so answerable, and one of the words I was looking for is specific. Right? Um, good questions are usually well specified, right? You actually you are specific about what you're asking. Right? Um, bad questions are vague and open ended, right? So your elaborate question. It's probably bad because it wasn't specific enough about what it was talking about, right? So it had bad specificity. It was, um, and and an example of a, one that's not very specific would be um, perhaps, and you could argue whether it's good or bad to be specific. But one of the things I'd say would be harder to answer is things like, um, what was the most interesting part of the paper? You know? What's the right answer to that? I, I'm not sure there is a right answer to what was the most interesting part of the square paper. It, 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 it's a good question for discussing things, but it's not good for, for actually kind of seeing, like discussing the paper itself in terms of what the paper says. 
because the most interesting, everybody's going to have a different opinion about what's the most interesting part of it, right? Um, okay, to the start of the discussion, say, hey, so what, what, so what kind of things triggered you? What made you interested in the paper? What was enjoyable about the paper? I can ask you those questions, but the quality of that is a question, certainly a research question. Um, you, you, you don't ask that sort of research question, right? Um, and so when we talk about questions, we look at the questions you ask. We're, we're going to be kind of discussing also that meta approach of what is the quality of this question. And um, it's not necessarily a linear scale either. It's another problem. Um, when I talk about these, like how specific versus general, it's not good, bad, right? It's more, what are you trying to achieve with those two? Right? And goals being very specific is useful because specific usually leads to measurable and answerable. Right? So you have a specific goal. Right? So a general goal would be something like, I want to lose weight. Yeah, okay. It's, but that's, and it's kind of measurable, but it's not specific. Right? If you say, I want to lose five kilograms, then you've got a specific thing You've got a binary measurement that you can say, and can you say whether you've done it or not? Is it answered? Yes, it is. Right. So that that kind of being more specific about your goal and about a question, instead of saying, um, I'm trying to think of a, a general. Yeah. So the, the general questions are kind of uh, general non-useful ones. Kind of what was the What was the objective of the author in writing the um, the paper? Right? Which is kind of a bit, well, what, what was his intention? Is that really measurable? How do you measure the intention of the author while writing the paper? We can. You can talk to the author? But... We could. It's specifically, I could yeah. send him an email and say, why did you do this? <laughs> and he goes, well, actually... I was trying to get tenure, and I needed to publish 10 papers that year, and you know, this was just one of them. <laughs> Had to get it out there. Um, and I was doing salami slicing. Uh, you'll see this, you might see the phrase you. Salami slicing in research is where you get one really good piece of research, and you carve it into five or six different articles, so you can publish five times rather than publish once. It makes it much harder for you guys as students, because when you go and find a paper, that's actually part of the salami, you just get that one slice, and you don't see it in context. Whereas what you want is you want the, the full sausage, right? You don't want just the bit of slice of that particular paper. And it means you have to go and search for them all, read them all, and recollect the single piece of research that was done. Um, okay, so if we have a look at these sort of questions, um, when, when we ask questions, um, I, I do a, for my uh, exams, what I've been doing to measure the quality of my questions uh, for my students is I've been doing a Pearson correlation between the mark you get in a question and the overall score in the exam. Okay, do you guys know what a Pearson correlation is? Do you know what a correlation is? Okay, so Pearson correlation is a measure of correlation. Okay. So a Pearson correlation, basically if you have that, it's pretty close to 1. Right? As would be that is also pretty close to 1, right? Because kind of, you know, there's a, a very a linear relationship between stepping out this way and going up that way. Okay. Um, if you have values over a bit of a spread like that, Right, we get kind of a, a blob that's going to be 80 90 percent, like 0 0.9, 0 0.8 correlation. Uh, if you have basically random dots all over the place, that's going to be zero. If you have them systematically down the line that way, that's negative one. Okay, so so Pearson correlations go from negative one through zero to positive one. Uh, and they just measure 
the correlation and change on this axis with the correlation and change in this axis, which means you get some weird things like if you have a, a distribution that looks like that, right? It starts low here, systematically goes up to the middle, and then systematically comes back down again. Your Pearson correlation will still be zero because there's not a smooth linear relationship between going bigger in this way and going bigger in that way. Okay, so it, it doesn't measure is there any relationship, it just measures that linear relationship. And it does it in a by looking at the individual values and looking at how they differ from that as they change, how they differ from that center line. Right? So it's kind of seeing if you're your rank ordering is the same. Okay. Uh, so what I do in the exams is I have questions. When I ask a question, you guys could answer. So you, you, do, you, you get, if it was a binary question, you get a bunch of students who will get it right. So let's say this was the rank order of the students. And I get some students who get it right and some students who get it wrong. And if I have something that looks like that, and maybe one here and one there, I would generally say that's actually not a bad question. Because if this was your overall grade in the, if that was your overall grade in the exam, right, so these were the A students and these were the F students, for this question, around about a C maybe, they start getting it right. Right, or in this case actually about there is probably a B. So if Students who are getting Bs and higher overall for the whole long answer exam and assessment, when I ask them this question, they get all that right and all these students get it wrong, that you might consider that a good testing question. Because right? it tests their knowledge and if you know stuff about the course, you get it right. If you don't know stuff about the course, you get it wrong. A bad question would be one where it's kind of independent of your general knowledge of the course, whether or not you get this question right or wrong. And a bad, so that's a kind of eh, nothing question, not, not necessarily a useful question. Runa does point out, and I've had him point out, that he, it could be on a, if you've got a wide topic area, and you have different topics, it might be that person just didn't study that topic. But, so you'll, you'll get the occasional one. Bad questions are where students who seem to perform badly in the course get it right, and students who know a lot about the course get it wrong. Right? That would be explicitly a bad question. Uh, I've seen some of those. I don't think we have any of those in the first year exam. So no, got, I don't think so. Yeah. So, I, I, so what I do is I run a correlation between every question I ask and the overall grade, which sees how well your overall performance maps to your answering this particular question. And so I can look at questions and say, all right, this question ranks people according to their knowledge. This question assuming, doesn't rank Assuming that the grade is the correct one. I mean, assuming that uh, the, the, the students were just very good in guessing, and they were right on these things, and if you asked them another question, they would have been wrong. Yeah, so I mean, that, I, I, I have a problem. You know that. I don't yeah. know the whole thing here. It's, this, the it's the size of this other, the other set of questions, right? So if, um, like you're, um, if you're doing research, you look at, at your, like your set and subset. So if you've got like 100 items, if you pull one out of, item out of that and test that against the other 99, then you know there's 99 of those. They're probably significant, independent of this one you've taken out. So you can measure this one performance against the other 99. However, it's got four items, and you pull one out and test this one against those three. Eh, that's that's pretty dangerous because three is not much of an average, right? And so if you happen to pull out the wrong one, suddenly you get a completely different result. All right, so, um, so yeah, it's the size and the quality. And yes, this is exams. Do exams test your knowledge of a subject matter well? Is it a good measure of your knowledge? It depends on how the exam is designed. If it's just merely testing you to see if you read the book, then it's just read and study, and you don't necessarily you just remember the knowledge and not necessarily know what you're writing about. Yeah, so you haven't integrated. So we know the, the Chinese room kind of thing. You've just yeah. kind of 
compacted a bunch of symbols together, <laughs> and you're recognizing symbol, producing symbol, and you're done. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, so there are a lot of those sort of things. So, um, uh, I thought we would, I'd start with a little bit of discussion, and we can keep working on this idea of what's a good question, because the GoRad game, we're going to go through and start voting on what makes good questions and bad questions. Um, now, do we have Mark? Did you get Marcus on? No, um, I'm just, just recording. recording. Yes. So I will jump Marcus in. I might if I can. Oh, okay. I have to do everything up there. Okay. Good. You can't see my password. I hate it when they do plain text tasks. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to change. So um, the. You guys started asking some questions. 